for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thursday evening, July the 4th, 1991. Fourth of July week family camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Chuck Flynn is the speaker of the evening. This is tape one of two tapes of the evening service. There has been uh, several remarks by the ministry about the uh, sons of God and the uh, overcomers and, uh, and uh, the elite and uh, 144,000. So for uh, about five minutes here tonight, I'm going to try and show you who I think they are. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to be one of them. See, everybody is a candidate. We're all candidates. But whether you achieve to that place or not is up to you and is up to me as we follow after the Lord. Over in Ezekiel, chapter 22, and verse 30, God says through Ezekiel, he says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap for me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. I wonder if that is still true today. God is looking for men and women and boys and girls to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. And I wonder if he's finding anybody that is willing to do that. Hmm? Today we came to stand in the gap at noon and make up the hedge and be intercessors in behalf of the needs that had come into this place. And you stood with us. So today we were all standing in the gap and making up the hedge in behalf of those that we were praying for. So he's looking for somebody to stand in the gap. Over in, over in chapter 9, back in chapter 9, we find here that uh, uh, the Lord uh, uh, cries through Ezekiel about the church uh, and the city, and he says it's six men. And we know number six is called, we say it's the number of man. We find that six men have come in th through the gate of the city uh, from the north. And every man has a slaughter weapon. He has a sword in his hand. And he comes to the house of the Lord, to the temple. But one of these men is clothed with, in, with linen, and he has a writer's inkhorn by his side. <clears throat> and they go in to the, uh, uh, into the uh, temple. Uh, and where do they go? They go in and stand beside the brazen altar. They come and stand at the place of judgment. These men have come. They've come to bring judgment. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> and as they stand there, the glory of the Lord lifts up, and goes and stands at the threshold of the house. And he calls to the man that's clothed with linen, which has the writer's ink on by his side. And the Lord says unto this man, he says, Go through the midst of the church, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men, the women, the boys, and the girls that do what? That sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the church. He tells this man to set a mark in the forehead of all of those who are concerned for the abominations that's in the household of faith. But to the others, he said, go through the city and smite. Don't let your eyes spare, neither have any pity. Slay utterly the old and the young, the maid and the children and the women. But come not near any man, woman, boy or girl, upon whom is the mark. I want that mark. And with that mark, there is no fear of what tradition has told us to fear the mark of the beast. We have already overcome the mark of the beast. But we are marked with this mark of the intercessor. Those who sigh and cry for the abominations that's in the household of faith. <clears throat> and then he, th he tells uh, those with the uh, swords, with the slaughter weapons, what does he tell to them? He says, begin at my sanctuary with the ancient men, with the elders, with those of authority, to start with them, because they are an abomination 
in the house of the Lord. And so, and it came to pass while they were slain that I was left, and I fell upon my face and cried and said, O oh Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon the church? And then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. It's a strange phrase back here in the beginning. You can ponder this for a little while. He said, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah. Why didn't he just say Israel or Judah? Evidently, there's a difference. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I re will recompense their way upon their head. I thought God was a God of love. I thought God wouldn't do anything like that. God's a God of judgment as well as a God of love. And his judgment and his love were exactly equal on the balance scale. Equal. His love does not exceed his judgment. His judgment does not exceed his love. They balance absolutely equal. So God is a God of love and he's also a God of judgment. And I want his love and not his judgment. I want to obey his word to the best of my ability. I want to learn how to rightly divide it and then to apply it to my life and be able to help others to apply it to their lives. And verse 11 says, And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as you've commanded me. So the day will come when God will fulfill this vision that he gave to Ezekiel. Now, to those who sigh and cry for the abomination. They are the inter they are intercessors. So if you want to be marked with God's mark, then become an intercessor. Sigh and cry for the abominations in the household of faith. And then God says, if you do, that you're marked. And, who, and, and to those who are marked, what did we read the, 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 this morning? What did he read about those who were marked? The, the 144,000 were marked. The, and, and who are the 144,000? We'll go back to Revelation chapter 2. And let's see. He made, a, he made a reference here the last night of this morning that, uh, that I ha had said there were eight, eight promises in the book of Revelation. So let's look at them real quick, and then Chuck can come and have the rest of the evening. Uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 2, and we'll start with verse 7. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which in the midst of the paradise of God. That's the tree that Adam and Eve could have eaten of, but didn't. But God says that the tree is still there, and to the overcomer, to those who become intercessors and sigh and cry and who are marked with the mark of God, he will give the tree of life. Number two is verse 11. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Life eternal is guaranteed to the overcomer. Number three. Now, each one, of, we could take these items right here, and, and Chuck or anybody else could spend the whole evening on just these eight items. Uh, number three is verse 17. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in a new stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. And he give us a white stone and a new name. <clears throat> number four is verse 26. Uh, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Who's going to rule and reign? in the kingdom of God, to him that overcomes. The fourth promise to him that overcometh is to him uh, that they will rule and reign in the kingdom. So if you want to rule and reign in the kingdom, seek to be an overcomer. Number five is in chapter three, and it is verse five of chapter three, five and five. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white linen, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So they're going to be clothed in white, walk in robes of white. And evidently, there's a possibility there that your name to be blotted out. Blotted out. He says, I won't blot it out. So that does away with our t teaching of uh, uh, eternal security right there. Number six is verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the city of my God, which is, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So we're going to get a, a new name written on us, but we're going to be something else. 
What does a pillar do? A pillar supports the house. You're going to be a support in the house of the Lord, in the temple of the Lord. We will be a pillar that holds the temple together and supports the temple. Number seven is verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sit down with my Father in his throne. Jesus says that, we'll be able, that we will sit in the throne with him. We will be equal with him in that respect. Nobody will ever be equal with Jesus, for he is King of kings and Lord of lords. But in a respect, he will allow us to sit in the throne with him. That is rulership and authority given unto us to, for those who sit up on the throne have the authority and the rulership of the nations or the universe. Now, number eight, which Tommy read to us. Where is it? Chapter 21. The eighth promise. Fulfillment, new beginning, whatever. Verse 7, chapter 21. Uh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Be equal heirs with Jesus is what that states there in, in a way as far as heirship, but not the throne ship. And, 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 and that's wonderful. But here is the most marvelous of all. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Who says there's not sonship? It says that uh, we are promised to the overcomer that we are a son of the living God. Sonship in his fullness is, is the eighth promise to the overcomer. I say unto you that you should seek with everything that's within you to understand and rightly divide the word and to hide it in your heart and become an intercessor, an overcomer, in the household of faith. Amen. Well, it's a, a blessing to have Chuck with us this weekend. As I mentioned last night, he's been a friend of ours for a long time. He's the first person who ever came here for camp meeting and spoke for camp meeting. And it's just a blessing to have Chuck with us to minister to us uh, these days. Uh, and I bless him, and I pray the anointing of the Lord to flow through him as he ministers the word of the Lord. Brother Flynn. Ten four, Jesus. I wish I could talk that fast. That Glenn, he gets, he covers a lot of territory, doesn't he? That's why here at Lake Hamilton we appreciate the going over of the Word of the Lord in many different aspects. And I'm so glad the Lord made us all different. Amen? Amen. So, so we appreciate the different personalities God has not chosen us to be robots. And so when you hear or see something for the first time or someone, maybe the personality doesn't really jive. It's a 40s term. Uh, with your of anointing. But uh, I do appreciate, I'm talking about now, the many different aspects. And it's in the word manifold. In Ephesians 3, in verse 10, the manifold wisdom of God. You know what that is? That's the many facets. Amen. Manifold means the many faceted glory. So the many manifold wisdom of God. It, we are not robots. We are ourselves. Amen? Amen. And so praise God. Even though you might think, well, I fell here or I missed God there or something. No, you didn't miss God's will. You just went through a teaching process. Never. I told John Osteen that I had to revolutionize his ministry in Israel. We were talking together, and I said, you know, in Seoul, Korea, the Lord told me, Son, tell my people they never missed my will. You never fail me if you get up and you keep going. If you go ahead and keep going. Some people say, well, I'm in the permissive will of God. God's not limited to our goose. That's right. So let's take heart. Amen. Do not be limited. Do not think that, well, you've got on a track. But, oh, thank God for the ability. And we thank God just because of this judgment that begins at the sanctuary of God. He's going to give you and I, hallelujah, the motivating force to get up and keep going and allow the authority of the Lord to be over us. Amen. Amen. He is not limited. Put it in your notes. He's not limited to my goose. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen? How beautiful it is. When we give, as you have supported tonight, we trust that you realize the, the great importance of all of us participating, but some of you the Lord has spoken to to lift the yoke from you in your giving. 
We at Lake Hamilton, we believe that the authority of the Lord and the process of Malachi 3.10, and I know from my own case, when I investigated Malachi 3.10, I found out that the word storehouse is a little different than what some proclaim. The word storehouse is the Hebrew for a place where ammunition is kept. And a place where ammunition is kept is that place where there is an anointing for the weapons of your warfare. Now, if you've been delivered, if you've been set free, and then later on God blesses you and puts you in your right mind, moves you on in to prosperity, and then you're attending somewhere. Don't forget Lake Hamilton. You hear me? That's a place where you were given ammunition. That's the true storehouse, not some place that's, that has a form of godliness but denying the power, doesn't believe in deliverance and setting people free. Oh, you, should, you should honor the ammunition that God has loosed in your spirit. And there's been many, you and I know, that come and go and they're set free. And then they never hardly mention what and where God's blessing and authority was given unto them. I don't feel reluctant in saying this. May God send these words tonight. And those that he has healed, may he convict them to support at least with a one-time blessing gift for appreciation that somebody has the guts to proclaim the deliverance of the Lord continually. Well, I've known many that were with me in Bible college and other places that in the beginnings of their ministry they were zealous, but now they're successful. No more deliverance. We have matured now. The preaching of the Word delivers us, which is true. But there still is a casting out, and if Jesus did it, then we can do it. Amen. 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 Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. When I give, when I, give I give to the storehouse. For that's the place where ammunition is kept. For the weapons of my warfare have been given unto me. I will honor that anointing. I will support that anointing. And we will rejoice together. For heaven will open. And I will not contain. The blessing of Almighty God. So I'll give it. Amen. Let's pray. Let's praise Him with a clap off. Hallelujah. As we turn to the Word of God in Revelation 1 and uh, verse 8. Or verse 4. Let's start with there. Boy, we've been in and out of Revelation. How many uh, know that... Uh, beautiful to have your Bible sort of practiced and oiled up, amen, into your soul and into your spirit. Praise the Lord. Father, we do thank you and we praise you for your wonders, for the beautiful way that you have loved us and met every need of every heart. And Father, just as just a little token of a desire, and now there's other desires in our midst, we lift them up to you, Jesus. We thank you that you'll meet the desire of every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation chapter 1. Look at verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him. And underline this, you'll find it throughout the book in different phases and forms. Say it with me. Which was uh, from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Underline seven spirits. It is my understanding that the seven spirits of God I want to speak on tonight. I am Alpha. Underline that in verse 8. I'll get to it eventually. So put that as your theme. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. The seven spirits which are before his throne. Put down Isaiah 11 and verse 2. 
<clears throat> has already been teaching today, and there, that some of those were already mentioned. I believe it was in a prophetic word as well. The seven spirits which are before his throne. And Isaiah names what Jesus will be equipped with and you and I. So he's given us this ability to rule and reign. Now, in the Hebrew, the word rod of iron, I'm just saying this on the side, put rod of iron. There is a phase in the Hebrew language that brings us out that he will rule with a rod of iron, and believe it or not, it means the backbone of his people. He will rule with the backbone of his people. And that's why you're being encouraged by Glenn and others. Come on in to his sanctuary. Come on in to his heart. Seek the face of the Lord. Stand in the gap, because he's going to empower you and I with a backbone that no generation has ever had. We must have it. A lot of iron, if we sure, we'll leave everything to Jesus. But that's not his purpose and plan. He wants to release people, and we will be victorious over the former creation that fell with Lucifer. And so in this portion of Scripture, we see the ability that Jesus will have and also we will have. Isaiah 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod mm. out of the stem of Jesse. Hallelujah. Choter is the Hebrew word for rod. C-H-O-T-E-R. A tender branch. A twig. Only here and in Psalm 14, Verse 3, two places, this choker, he'll rule with a rod. Hallelujah. The former is a mere starting of a branch, a twig, a tender shoot, sprouting out as a root of a dead fallen tree. It would grow and flourish in all the earth. So the authority of these two he is the twig. He is that which has come forth from death. He is that twig. He is that root of the stem of Jesse. And then the great maturity of the rod of iron is the people that he has redeemed. The backbone of his people. Just put in there uh, homework. Study the rod of iron. Come up with some fresh revelation. God will bless you for it. It's beautiful. I recommend Dake's Bible. I know we had some good watermelon tonight for dinner. Sweet. You put a knife to it, it would crack open. It was wonderful. But there are some things if it's like eating watermelon. When you study, there's some things that are, you know, their ideas at the time, but thank God for the word. And so Dake's Bible, in one volume, gives me a lot to study when I'm traveling. I recommend it highly. If you're going to give somebody a Bible, I do recommend Dake's Bible. To me, it's the only full gospel Bible. There's others coming out, and uh, I believe the finest date goes into word studies, which I want to study the original. It's all right to read what people think and their ideas. But uh, it's good for us to have uh, the crux of the matter. Now let's look at this. Verse 1, read it again. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord. Now in verse 2, we have the seven spirits of God. Now name them off. Number 1 is the Spirit of the Lord. There is a small S here. There's a reason for that. What Jesus will have, the capability of ruling the earth, and you and I with him, right now we have this same anointing within us in the name of Jesus. But this word Spirit is not Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. 
It is the Hebrew word ruach, R-U-A-C-H. Ruach is the word in Genesis when God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. The word cool is ruach. What the Lord is saying here is that I'm going to restore those who have sought my face, come in to the maturity that I have spoken of in my word. I'm going to reestablish the communication I had with Adam in the cool of the day with you. Hallelujah. You get that? Here it is. Here it is. It's very simple, but you would have missed it if you didn't apply yourself to study. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And through Jesus, the Spirit, or the Ruach, the cool of the day, by the gifts and fruits of the Spirit, by the divine capabilities of his love and justice, you and I will be lifted in to the cool of the day with the Father. He can and will reestablish that if you desire it. Amen. I would like some cool of the day, especially around here. Here in Arkansas, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty warm. No, I'm talking about a spiritual dimension. Cool of the day doesn't mean a time of day like after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No, the cool of the day means that I, rule and reign in the day. And he doesn't mean sunrise to sunset. Because in Genesis, the day with God is in the morning, or the first day, or the second day, or the third day. God says, I will be God within you during the most perplexing, dynamic, sinful time of the night. Satan and all of his hosts have usurped authority during the night, but the children of the Lord are the ones that control the night. Amen. You and I, the creative acts of God within us, we speak and we bind every activity of evil. We even bind evil prints over the United States. We bind evil prints over our city and over our state and over our country and over every country. When you're praying for someone of another country, first of all, bind the evil prince of that country. Yeah. That's taught us, of course, in Daniel. But the princes are limited in their knowledge, so you and I have to give them the truth that binds them. Because 1 Corinthians 2, verse 8 to 10 says that we are to have the wisdom of God Almighty and not the counsel or wisdom of the world, who the princes have that come to naught, and it mentions these princes that if they had known, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. So satanic power is ignorant of the power that you and I have. That's why we tell them. That's why they're casting out. It's not that, uh, you know, if you feel led, devil come out. All right, I don't want to disturb you, but please come out. No, you've got to tell them your authority, and it's because the princes of this world do not know the spiritual manifold wisdom that God has given you. So speak up. Speak up. And as you speak it with divine authority, they are obligated because we have the power, which is the delegated authority from the throne. It's like you have power in your car, but when a stop sign goes red, you better stop. Because although you have power, there's a delegated authority be behind that red light. You don't want to see any blue light. <laughs> but we're the blue light. We're the speaking of the red light and saying, Satan, you're bound, and then Jesus is the blue light. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his power within us. It's a beautiful confirmation. The Lord, you've given me the spirit or the cool of the day. Communication. It is available in my life. Praise God. 
shall rest upon him. Number one. The spirit of wisdom, I'm going to have to hurry a little bit, is number two. The spirit of understanding is number three. The spirit of counsel is number four. And might, number five. The others I think you can study through, but might is a little, has a little more depth to it. It does not mean power. It means confidence in what you have read in the Word, it's established within you. For I will strengthen him with might by the Spirit in the inner man. Ephesians, what is it? Three? Somebody look it up for me so we can paraphrase it. Ephesians 3. I will strengthen you with might. Just after the family of God verses there. 3.16. Thank you, dear. 3.16 of Ephesians, he's going to strengthen me with might by his Spirit in my inner man. My inner man is where the rivers come from. So if I'm going to flow with rivers of living water, I've got to have might. What is might? The purity of believing what God has said is true. I have prayed for something. Nothing will detract me. When you pray through about something, God's going to put a might within you that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. We were in Phoenix, Arizona. Brother <clears throat> Warren Johnson of the Forsberg Gospel Church in Vancouver, Canada spoke at one of our sessions years ago. And I'll never forget this principle in my ministry. And it has worked beautifully as I've yielded to the Lord. He said there was a <clears throat> mother whose son had grown up and then she knew he wasn't saved at the time, but he, she had hadn't heard from him in years. She prayed for her son's salvation till she prayed into a dimension of confidence and might. She knew her son would be saved, and she would know it. Telephone rang one day. I mean the doorbell. The Western Union boy was there. Are you Mrs. Jones? Yeah. It's 355 Gulf Street? Yeah. This is your telegram. Would you please sign for it? She signed her name. As the door slowly closed behind her, she tore it open. We regret to inform you that your son was killed in an auto accident. Without a thought, without a flinch, grabbing the door before it shut, boy, boy, she opened the door, held her telegram up. What is it, man? This is not my telegram. This is not my telegram. Well, ma'am, aren't you Mrs. Jones, 355 Gulf? And I'm, yes, but this is not my telegram, boy. I prayed through that my son would be saved before he goes into eternity. And this is not my telegram. A few moments the phone rang, the manager of Western Union. Mrs. Jones was so sorry. There was the numbers that were uh, mislocated and, and reversed. And uh, it was not your telegram. We're so sorry for this kind of telegram getting to you. She said, praise God. And when that was told, her son was already saved and was an evangelist in the gospel ministry. Because she was strengthened with might by the Spirit of the Lord in the inner man. And when God tells you something, let's loose the might. There's things you're believing for now. Lift your hand right now and let's seal it by a seal, a proclamation. I seal to my heart, my innermost being. I loose the might of Jesus upon me. I'm strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. And what I pray for, hallelujah, I will have might to believe it and I will receive it. Now let's clap and praise God. So might is number five. 
Go back to Isaiah 11, verse 2. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of knowledge is number six. And the fear of the Lord is number seven. Now, seven is God's perfect number, of course. But eight, the number eight is the number for the anointing, or Jesus. Jesus himself, his name is Christ, which is the Greek form of the Hebrew form Messiah. You can say either one, but Messiah is the Hebrew form of the anointing, or the anointed one. Christ is the Greek form of the anointed one. That's why Peter's proclamation was the rock that we're all built on. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the Son, the disciplined one, of the living God, the creative one. Therefore his anointing comes upon me in my salvation. I discipline myself to come into the sonship of the Lord so I can speak the creative word. You don't have sonship just to argue about it. You have sonship to speak the creative word. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Let's see some signs following. Then <laughs> we can label each other. You won't want to be labeling anyway. Thank God for the authority that he's given us. And so now, number eight, put down by verse three. Quick. Understanding. Circle it. This is where the evangelist really helped me out in word studies. And shall make him of quick understanding. Some of you heard Dick Mills while he was there, here recently, back in Easter. Now, quick understanding, when you look it up in the Hebrew, it means catch the sense of a hound. You did not misunderstand me. A hound dog. God is saying to each one of us, I've given this to my son, I've given him by the Spirit such a sensitivity that he will have quick understanding. Just say it, I will have quick understanding in the name of Jesus. It will be a sensitive anointing from the Holy Ghost so that I will know all factors when I make any judgment when I make any decision I will know the will of God if I have quick understanding Amen it shall make him of quick understanding or the scent of a hound as a hound is so sensitive in natural sense, he can pick it up. So the Spirit is given to you and I quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Why, you and I will have quick understanding. Please circle eyes. Put down Deuteronomy. 32, I believe it's 15. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Put down Exodus 21. Exodus 21, verse 5 and 6. And uh, Psalms 40, verse 6. On the ears. We will have quick understanding. will not judge after the sight of our eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove and smite. Hallelujah. And slay. Here we have eyes and ears 
that are spoken of in the negative sense of just the natural seeing and the natural hearing. God has given us in our eyes, let's go to Deuteronomy and, and uh, underline that. In Deuteronomy, I believe it's uh, in 32, oh, verse 10. 32, verse 10. Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy, I understand, more than any other book of the Bible. Deuteronomy is the word of the living God. How many know that the first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch? Rose, um, <laughs> Roses wrote it. Moses wrote them. And when Moses wrote the first five books, then God put the first five books into the Psalms. You will not understand the Pentateuch. It will get so boring if you don't relate it to the certain chapters that relate to those books. How many want to know those chapters that relate to the first five books of the Bible? It's, by the way, in the Dakes Bible. Before we get into Deuteronomy 32, uh, like Brother Tom says, hold that with your finger there. <clears throat> You've got to be an octopus with some of us preachers. Go to Psalms. Well, let, let's just start with verse 1. I'll just go through them with you. Uh, chapter 1, please, of Psalms. <clears throat> this is the first section of Psalms, and it is Psalms 1 to 41, the Genesis division. The first book of Psalms is the Genesis book concerning man. Psalms 1 to 41. Psalms 1 to 41. The second division is the Exodus book concerning Israel being led out of bondage. Psalms 42 to 72 concerning Israel. 42 to 72. Being led out of bondage. Psalms 42 to 72. Concerning Israel, 42 to 72. The third book is the Leviticus book. In the Psalms, Psalm 73 to 89, and that deals with Leviticus or the sanctuary. The sanctuary. Our worship. The building, the structure of our worship. Be careful how you worship. <laughs> Amen. Numbers. The fourth book of the Psalms, the book of Numbers, Psalms 90, chapter 90, to 106. And it deals with the believer here, or Israel and the Gentiles. So it's beautiful that you will understand Leviticus and Numbers. Those books are not as learned as the believer should uh, be familiar with them. So... If you'll read in Psalms that correlate them, you'll find a great understanding. Psalms 90 to 106. The fifth book is the book of Deuteronomy, and that is God and His Word is emphasized there. And uh, most of the book of Deuteronomy and from chapter 107 to chapter 150 is recorded. Isaiah is the only one that's recorded more in the New Testament. Psalms chapter 107 to 150 is the Deuteronomy book in the Psalms. 107 verse 20 is that he sent his word and healed him. Hallelujah. So God and his word is proclaimed throughout the Psalms. Keep that key. It will certainly help you in the understanding of the word. Meanwhile, back at Deuteronomy 32, as we look at verse 10, he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Please underline that. Put down Isaiah 11, verse 3 and 4. Here is 
one of the most astounding. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He led him about. He found us. The word apple is a Hebrew word, ishan. I S H O N, as in Nancy, ishan. It's the dark pupil of the eye, the hole, the gate, or the door of the eye. In the correct Hebrew, it means I have kept you as the little man of my eye. Has nothing to do with an apple for the teacher. Type of a, of course it's involved with his adoration and his communication with his kids, but oh, this means more than that. The eye is one of the greatest and most marvelous workings of God. He has given you an eye, and it means the actual pupil. It means the actual eye itself. God is saying your natural eye was given to you because you're the apple of my eye. I will put all of my inspiration into you. All of the things that I will enjoy, I will put into your life. You will regulate my disposition. I don't know why he did it. As I told Sister tonight, she comes up with some goody questions, and I said, I don't know. I'll leave that with the Father. He really said he's away. But he made you and I the apple of his eye. He implied, and he was after the very eye ball. He's talking about the natural optometry here, but he's bringing it into a spiritual lesson. And he says, you're the Ishan of my eye, the little man of my eye. I guess he, he, he grabbed his brother one day and said, hey, Aaron, come here. And he said, all right, let me look. And Moses looked in there and said, if you look in someone's eye, you'll see your full image. You will not see your nose or your brow or your temple. You will see your full image because of the curvature, the beautiful mirror, if you please, of the eye. So Moses looked in and he called it, that's the little man of my eye. And then that's what God said. You write that down. You're the little man of my eye. You're the opening. I cannot enjoy my creation unless you enjoy it. I cannot enjoy your loved ones and your life, your job. I cannot enjoy your own salvation that I have given by my love unless you enjoy it. If your attitude is marred in any way or with any root of bitterness, God says it puts a cataract over my eye. I don't know why the Father did it, but he enjoys his creation, his attribute, his counsel, his greatness to your attitude and mine. With the apple of his eye, he found us, he led us, and he made us the apple of his eye. That's beyond me. And when I get upset, his eye is dim to set me free. When I have something unforgiven to somebody, he cannot work to bless me until that is lifted off of my life. Now here's where the, the pedal hits the metal. We can shout. We can come into all the graces of the Word, but unless your attitude and mine is so graceful in the fruits of the Spirit where God can see clearly, to enjoy the world around us. I just stopped this afternoon over there in, in our room, and I heard a little Bob White, you know, Bob what? I could hear it so clear. Then he woke me up. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
you're the apple of his eye, and don't you ever forget it. The judgment begins at your eye and your attitude. He told Abraham, he says, even your position in your home will bring to pass what I've already spoken to you about. It's not because you will shine out in all of the elders and you will be a great man of faith. He said, Abraham, you're going to be multiplied. You'll be the head, not the tail. You will have the stars of the sea. You'll have people. And oh, and he gave him all these wonderful promises. But then, in Genesis 18, verse 19, I know Abraham, and I know that he'll be the example before his children and before his servants, so that I may bring to pass that which I have spoken of him. Your attitude in your own personal life and your domestic life releases the word of the living God and don't ever forget. Let's don't have any cataracts over God's eye to set us free. Amen. That's why when you pray, forgive. <laughs> Isn't that what it says? Don't have any cataracts over my eye. You pray to your blue in the face, as Grandma used to say. That's your attitude. Let forgiveness come upon you right now. Let's take a few moments. And Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us. Let our eye be single. Let the anointing of God be upon us. Take away and lift off of us anything that will dull your vision to deliver, to set free. In Jesus' name, forgive us, Father. Forgive us our iniquity. Forgive our fathers. Forgive our nation. Hallelujah. All right, that's it. We must go on. Psalms 40 and verse uh, 6. Psalms 40, verse 6. Here is uh, a psalm that brings out the ear situation. It's something that God also did that is not as proclaimed as often as it should be. Relating to the individual believer. Psalms 40 was already quoted in another session today, I waited patiently, verse 1, for the Lord. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, and out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would, the word reckoned is an accountant term, in order unto thee, if I would declare and speak of them, there are more than can be numbered. In verse 6 is what I want, underline it. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Circle it, please. My ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. I believe we're the volume of the book. In other words, there's many volumes. It is written in me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy laws within my heart. Hallelujah. Do the will of God. It is written in the volume of the book. Jesus, do the will of God. Verse 6, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, thine ears hast thou opened. This is the conversation in heaven before Jesus was ever the babe in Bethlehem. It's one of those heavenly conversations that our Lord had. He says, you've opened my ear. Sacrifice and offering, thou didst not desire, but you desire an opened ear. In Exodus 21, that the year of Jubilee, the servant has come, the Hebrew faith, and the master tells him he can go free. In verse 5, the servant says, I love my master, I love my wife, I love my children. I will not 
go out and do my own thing. Your salvation is connected with your family. In that sense, I love my master. If you love your master, you'll love your wife, your husband, and your children. Amen. That authority then means, verse 6, the master takes the slave. He's no longer a slave of death, but he's a slave of love. He puts an awl through his ear and tore, bores a hole in his ear. That's the same thing that Jesus is saying to the Father, you have opened my ear. Over in Hebrews, the 10th chapter in the 5th verse, just make a note of it. This is said or spoken, this verse, sacrifice and offering, thou didst not desire. Then, instead of saying, mine ear hast thou opened, in the New Testament, he changes it to, a body thou hast prepared for me. So the body is the open ear of Jesus. The body of Christ. That's why faith cometh. By reading the word? No. No. By hearing, I just wanted to help you there. Faith cometh when you hear. And hearing will come when you obey the word. And so the open ear, that's why Paul said, I'm a servant. The same thing is implied. A servant of Jesus Christ. That word servant is doulos. The Greek word D-O-U-L-O-S which means a love slave or my ear is open. And so God is saying, I want you to be the apple of my eye. Watch your attitude. Communicate with me in the cool of the day. And also hear my desire. Seek my faith. For as you know my word and you hear. You say, well, how can I? That's the formula, point one, point two, and point three. No, there's no points when you're desiring God. It's all in what David said, one thing have I desired, and that will I seek after. God loves your desire. And he meets the desire of your heart, and your desire of your heart in priority is to seek his face and to hear his voice. He will do it. The anointing of the Trinity power will come upon him, and his grace is given. Meanwhile, back to Revelation 1, please. Revelation chapter 1. I am Alpha. The seven spirits which are before his throne. Verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall hail because of him. Even so, amen. Verse 8, I am Alpha, read it with me, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Say of the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. This word Almighty means the many-breasted one. In Psalms 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 1. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Or else is the Hebrew form. It means the many-breasted one. God has many breasts for you to sustain for an infant. God says, I will meet, I will have a sustaining victory for any situation you're in. You as a child. I have many breasts. He's the El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Now, Satan is not a creator. 
The devil cannot create, so all he can do is imitate what God has already yes, spoken. So the great imitation of El Shaddai is in the book of Acts, and it is the great goddess Diana. I only say that because of scriptural uh, words there that describes as men in that day described her. The great goddess Diana is supposed to have come out of heaven, and then they built a building over it, and then they killed all of the workers so that nobody could deny uh, the imitation. Now, the great goddess Diana was a female figure, but the chest area was covered with breasts, and this was a cheap imitation of the Almighty, El Shaddai. Satan can only imitate what God has spoken, and his name was the Almighty, the El Shaddai. In all of my travels, I have never seen anything of this type except one place. As we were going through in 1961, coming from the World Pentecostal Conference in Jerusalem, we and uh, many of the Fort Square dignitaries, Dr. Courtney and many others, Brother Louis Hall for the Assemblies of God. We all met in Rome. We all come by bus and uh, uh, up from Rome into uh, France, Paris. But when we went to the Vatican, Paul Buser and I were standing, and, uh, and uh, the guide was telling many other things, but nobody even spoke of a certain statue, and I was shocked. As I looked at it, it was the exact figure of the great goddess Diana. It's in the Vatican today. Just a note, religious note. It is interesting that Satan also imitated the Urim and Thummim. So anything very important to God, Satan will try to imitate it, even overcoming belief. But the Urim and Thummim was given by God. He made the ephod, or told Aaron, Moses, to make an ephod. He put on it the three rows of the four precious stones. Now, those stones were from the earth. And there was twelve of them, representing the twelve tribes of Israel. But God said, I don't want you to just have twelve tribes. I'm giving the twelve tribes the land of the earth in the Holy Land, but to the thirteenth tribe of Israel. I'm going to give stones, not from the earth, but from heaven. And he calls them the Urim, which means the Hebrew word U-W-R is fire or light or illumination. Thummim is the Hebrew for circle. And circle is the symbol of truth. In Colossians it says, we are complete in him, means we are encircled by him, and there's no loose ends in Jesus. Jesus is, has encircled us, and that's the word for peculiar in 1 Peter 2, verse 9. We are peculiar people. doesn't mean we're unusual to God. Religious people, yes, we're unusual to them. But, oh, thank God, we're the high treasure of the Father because he has encircled us. And nothing touches you and I but what the Father permits us. We're encircled. The human human now was placed into the New Testament. Now, this is the way I feel about it. It's the way I feel that the Holy Spirit gave us a sign of that release in the New Testament. At the Last Supper, John the Beloved, even today in Jewish families, the side, the leader of the, the feather, isn't that the way they call it? The feather, the Passover feast. Usually the grandfather is the leader. So Grandpa, he puts on 
the table, around the table, after everything is served. He is the leader. But on his right is the youngest child that can ask questions. The youngest is placed on his right, and the one he trusts is on his left. At the Last Supper, Judas was on his left. In Psalms, I think it is 41, He who I fed at my table lifted up his heel against me. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But the youngest was on his right. And that's why Peter said, could not ask Jesus a question. Peter says, John, you asked him. Isn't that right? You, know, you understand that now? Because it's only the youngest that can ask it. That's why you can ask any question you want in Jesus. Amen. It might take you a little while. That's all right. You can come before it. And that's why John the Beloved had to ask him and not Peter. Because the youngest was on his right. Then when Jesus was set down, John did something that was unusual. And, and Leonardo da Vinci paints John as a very sheepish kind of sissified individual. Now John, I'm not saying that I've ever saw John, but just by the description of a son of thunder, he's no little Lord Fontenot. That's right, amen. <laughs> he's a man's man. He was a disciple of love, but he was a man. And for him to put his head upon the chest of Jesus meant that the transference of the human human has been placed on the high priest, and now that's been released to, to the church, to love. And when he put his head upon the heart of the high priest, and then that was loose in your life, that we would hear the heart of Jesus. And every time in every scripture you read, the word of the Lord becomes stronger within you. You have a natural bloodstream, but that's why the word of God separates the spirit and the soul and goes down to the very joint of moral, moral, that it produces the blood there. That's why the Word goes into the very being, and then the Scripture goes throughout your being and your blood. When the viper bit Paul, the poison could only go as far as the Word that was in his blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the vipers of life bite you, you have the Word beating within you. Your heart. How many ever feel, I don't have peace about that? It's because the heartbeat of Jesus is leading you. And the strength of the Word is upon you, protecting you from bad decisions and bad direction, or holding you or hurrying you so you'll be at the right place at the right time. It's the Word working mightily, as we sing. Glory to God. In you. And so the heartbeat of Jesus was moving through the Apostle Paul. And as the shipwreck didn't get him, but the barbarous people in Acts 28, verse 6, they were watching. And when they put some kindling wood on the fire, the fiber come out and bit him. And Paul just shook it in the fire. Now that type of six inch viper is so poisonous. Dr. Luke was well versed in medical. He knew the diagnosis. And he says he should have fallen down dead suddenly. In other words, a couple of heartbeats, he should have died. And Dr. Luke said something that has been verified since then. He should have swollen up. As in the Darien province, in the lower part, the beginning of South America, from the Panama uh, Peninsula, and there in those jungles of the Choco Indians. I was getting ready to minister. Marianne and I had just sang, and the Choco Indians started throwing things at me. And I thought, well, they haven't had me preach yet, but 
of my singing, you know. I'll just say three things, and within a foot was one of these very poisonous snakes. And the missionary said that that was a bit of but the a miracle of resurrection. You would have fallen up when the young men got bit last week. We had to build a casket three times before we could get him in the ground. What happened? Paul shook it in the fire. The barbarous people said, the shipwreck didn't get him, but the knife of death. But some of your greatest moments is some of the greatest attacks of the enemy. But shake it in the fire. Because within us is the heartbeat of Jesus. You've read the word. You've been here. The everlasting gospel from 6 a.m. <laughs> Amen. Oh, glory of the word of the Lord is within you. You can thank God for it because you have the heartbeat. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Ye shall lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Ye shall speak with me, tongues. And this is what released the poison. And if you take up any deadly thing, if you take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. It shall not hurt you. It shall not hurt you. Let's go over it once more, everybody. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> ye shall lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. Ye shall speak with new tongues. And if you take the thing, you get the thing. And if you take the thing, you get the thing. You shall not hurt you. It shall not hurt you. It shall not hurt you. It shall not hurt you. Hallelujah! Thank God for the heartbeat of Jesus. Glory to God. When I read the word, you hear them too much. Hallelujah! I have the heartbeat of the Lord within me. Do you is in the New Testament in John 16, verse 13. For when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. The symbol of truth now is a circle or urim. So he will guide you in all truth is the urim anointing that is on the church. He shall not speak of himself, but he shall what? Show you things to come. Hallelujah. He will show you things. And that means revelation or urim, fire, light, or illumination. So through them, he will guide you in all truth. He will show you things to come is urim. So the urim and thummim is within the body of Christ when we are filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. When the spirit of truth comes upon you, you will know the truth, and you will know things to come. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. Because the word, we will be over the heart of our high priest. We will love him. For throwing our cup upon him, he has set us free. Revelation 1, verse 8. I'm Alpha and Omega. The language of that day was in the Greek, and the first letter of the Greek alphabet is Alpha. So God chose that to bring forth that He wasn't just in the beginning, He is. I am that I am. So He's Alpha. He, he's already been there. He's Omega. Tonight we just want to look at three words, and then we'll pick it up tomorrow in our next seminar. I am Alpha. The furthest that I know, well, why don't you put down the verse 8, Titus 1, 2. Titus chapter 1, verse 2. And then put down Genesis 
chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. Titus 1, verse 2, and Genesis chapter 1 and 1 and 2. There's three words I want to deal with. Let's look at the book of Titus. I am Alpha. The Apostle Paul that was taken to Arabia and taught the glories and the intimate intricacies of Revelation released one of the eternal revelations of God Almighty. Titus is just before Philemon. Philemon is just before Hebrews. In Titus chapter 1, Remember verse 1, what I told you, Paul, a servant, put down the word doulos. In Exodus 21, verse 1 and 6, where the servant had his ear open. A servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Verse 2, underline the whole verse in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Jesus explained to the Apostle Paul this revelation. And he was teaching him about this great salvation and all the idiosyncrasies of humanity and the attributes of divine, infinite wisdom. Jesus let it out. The only place in Scripture that we have this further, furtherest existence in the Alpha. And it's here in Titus 1, 2. Let's look at the Greek word that Paul used. He's not talking about Genesis 1, 2 here, or Genesis 1, 1 promised before the world began, or put down promise before any creative act. This is way out, way before, we don't know how long, but way before Genesis 1-1. Who did God promise it to? Possibly the same ones, we can say that, that he said, let us make man in our own image. This is the further scriptural definition of the beginning of God Almighty. Before any creative act, and the word is, let's spell it, chronon, C-H-R-O-N-O-N. Chronon, A-N-A-N. Two words, chronon, C-H-R-O-N-O-N. Aeonion is A-I-O-N-I-O-N. The ages of time. It means eternity before the ages of time began. Chronon, Aeonion, is before all things. Because he made heaven in Genesis 1-1. So before that, God, who cannot lie, spoke of you and of me and our salvation. What's the purpose of teaching this? So you'll know he's the Alpha. So you'll know he's the beginning. And even before anything was created, he told the Trinity, there's going to be a salvation. He told somebody, so let's just say the Trinity at least. God says, and Paul the Apostle says, he spoke of the hope of our salvation. And if God spoke of you before the heavens and earth were created, you better depend, you better believe that you can depend on him today. See there? There is a confidence we have in the eternal ship of God. Chronon, Aeonion, before anything was created. Now the next word is Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1. And that word is Themelios. E-M-E-L-I-O-S. Themelios, these are all Greek words, by the way. Themelios means to create something out of nothing. And as our sister began to know, all things were made by him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and was God. This is Genesis 1-1, and the Word created everything perfect. Themelios. 
the original creation out of nothing. Then Genesis 1-2 is the third dimension of the Alpha. This one is prevalent throughout the Word of God. He was crucified before the foundation of the world, and this is the one that God explained to Jesus he would be crucified. And this one is kata, A-A-T-A, Bole, all one word, kata Bole, K-A-T-A-B-O-L-E. And then the second word is cosmos, spelled with a K, K-O-S, at Moes, at the kata Bole cosmos, and that is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And that's what the Bible calls the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, verse 8, where the book, those that worship the Antichrist, their names are not found written in the book of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Not talking about Genesis 1 1, not talking about the original creation, talking about the fall of the Genesis 1, 2 is the capital A cosmos. And that's when Lucifer was cast out of heaven. And all of this, I like that about the tale. I've never heard anything of that order about the tale. Bringing forth <laughs> the tale of uh, Lucifer or of Satan. And all of those that were cast out. And then the disembodied, the ones that were the inhabitants on the earth that Lucifer was in charge of. And that's why the earth became without form and void. And when Lucifer fell, he said, I will be like the Most High. I'll go to the sides of the north. I'll sit on the throne. If you read those five I wills in Isaiah 14 and verse 12, to verse 15, you'll find that whatever Lucifer wanted by pride, you and I get by grace. Did you hear that? Yeah, amen. From the foundation of the world, whatever happened to Lucifer when he was cast out of heaven, you and I have gotten the divine authority. Ephesians says we will set with him in heavenly places. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, from glory to glory, he's changing. And that's the word for transfigured me. He's transfiguring me into his image by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Whatever Lucifer wanted, we get. Somebody has come up with this analysis, so I feel it's important enough to mention it, that the heart angel were three. And they relate directly to the Trinity. So the Holy Ghost is the messenger. And that messenger relates to Gabriel. God is a consuming fire. And that relates to Michael, the war angel. And Jesus, he's the son the begotten. Jesus relates to Lucifer. It's interesting. Lucifer usurped authority over him, and now Lucifer was cast out of heaven, and the bride is now related to Jesus. And that's why he says, I've given you power over all the power of the devil. What a privilege. I don't know. You can roll that over and study about it, but sort of fit. Amen. This is the end of Part A. Please play Part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.
For tapes, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A of the evening service of July the 4th, 1991, Chuck Flynn Ministry. This tape has uh, the prophecies on it that were given to the individuals and the conclusion of the evening service. This is the 4th of July week family camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. What a privilege. I don't know. You can roll that over and study about it, but... Sort of fits, amen. Hallelujah. He has equipped us to have power over all the power of freedom. And that's why we have deliverance back. For we are the same. But the most high. You know what that means, most high? You look it up in Galatians 14. And when Abraham paid his tithe, he raised his arm to the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, so if we're the saints of the possessor, that's it, we're the saints of the most high, we're the saints of the possessor of heaven and earth. Hallelujah, let's praise it. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. The foundation of the world, we'll pick it up in our next session, will be in Matthew 13, verse 35, Secrets were from the foundation of the world. That's when the Father told him about you and I before Adam was ever created. Also in Hebrews 4, verse 3 and 4, the works were finished from the foundation of the world. John 17, verse 24, Jesus said, Let them know my glory, which you gave me when you loved me before the foundation of the world, the Catabole cosmos, at the fall. God told his wisdom to the Son, and Jesus felt the separation, but the Father loved him. That's why you and I, when we were yet sinners and felt rejection, the love of Christ come upon us, and we're set free. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, on and on. How marvelous. Oh, what glorious depth of the Word. First Corinthians, uh, yes, First Corinthians 2 says that the Spirit of the Lord searches out the deep things of God. I looked at the word deep. I was so amazed at how inventive God is. If you just love God for his worship and his saviorship, you've missed a lot of his person. Because the word deep goes into secular and inventive things 2,000 years before it ever happened. The Holy Ghost is very inventive. And you know what the word deep means in the Greek? Sonar. S-O-N-A-R. I didn't realize it. I thought I was anointed when I go fishing, but I didn't know the reason. There's a sonar, and it goes down searching and bouncing back, and it tells you where the striped bass are. Yeah. Ooh, I feel the anointing when I talk about this. And the Lord put it in the Word thousands of years ago and said to the Holy Ghost, Search it, my heart. And that's why David was a man after God's own heart. It doesn't matter if someone said, oh, that's not for your dis dispensation. And David, oh, David, no, that's just for the priest. Well, David said, bless God, I need it. I pull it down by faith and walk in it. And that's what the Holy Ghost says. I want to reveal, I want to expose to you the heart of the Father. And as you pray, that's what Daniel was doing when he was praying the 21 days. It, the answer had already started. He was just beaming the sonar. 
Hey, I'm still believing. No, I'm rejoicing. You come into a warfare of praise, and you're praising the Lord. Because when you pray, that all of the evil princes try to keep our prayer from us or the answer. But that's why the Spirit of God searches out the deep thing every day. Quote that scripture, First Corinthians 2, and the verse 6, I think. First Corinthians 2, for the Spirit of the Lord we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yes. Yet not the wisdom of this world, uh -huh. or the princes of this world, but come to naught. Princes of this world, same prince of Persia, is over Iran, just like he was in Daniel's day. Yeah. And if it's the same devil, you and I have the same power. Hallelujah. You get that? Praise God. This is not something unusual. This should be taught in every assembly of faith. Praise God, brother. Princes, yeah. Let's we'll start again. Okay. No, you didn't read what I wanted. Where is that about the spirit? I mean, you read, yes, it was good. Four. four. Read four. Four is, and my speech and my preaching was not with passing words of man's wisdom, Go ahead. but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Okay, that sounds right. Verse 10 now. If God hath revealed them unto us, oh, yes. Spirit, for oh, the Spirit searches all things. For the Spirit searches. Okay. Amen. Now the word, I believe it might be the word searches. There, it's the Greek word. There are two volumes. Come down, Irma, and get those two volumes that are brown and just hold them up. If you want to study and be key to Strong's Concordance, if you don't have a Strong's Concordance, shame on you. Because every, every word of the Bible is in strong. Now, others are good, but they're not as good. All right. Pick up those two. See those two? I have used those in a quick... Now, I have others, Kittle and others, that go a little stronger into uh, the Word. But these are, are uh, geared, keyed, to strong concordance. Show them again from the others. Yes. And I want you to know they'll bless you uh, get a strong concordance in these, and it'll really open up the word for you. And uh, so I just want to uh, emphasize that. Well, we got to hurry because we're on tape. Okay, search it. For the Spirit, start there. Uh, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Uh -huh. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Some of the most simple teaching is right there. Because nobody knows you like the Spirit. And nobody knows God like the Holy Ghost. And therefore, the Holy Ghost reveals to me. In other words, I don't have to beg God to show me something. I just have to say, Father, I know your Spirit. Now reveal yourself to me. And he'll show you his way. Because the Holy Ghost will search out the deep. Deep calling on the deep. Remember the psalm said that? This is where it's at. Paul explains to us how that happens. Is the Spirit of God will go forth and show Chuck Flynn or put your name in there, your direction, investments, anything of your job. Some of us have made lousy investments. I reversed that on the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit will search the deep things or the purposes of the Father for us. Father, with that, we thank you for your anointing. We praise you, Lord. This is our finest hour. We feel the word tonight that you are Alpha. Therefore, we have confidence because you knew and you spoke of our salvation before any creation. Now we can rest in the confidence that we have in thee that what you have spoken, it will happen. Yes, Amen. It will come to pass in the name of Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good to us? Amen. All right, I'll minister to some tonight. There was one sister that I called out and I, I was wanted to give it a uh, cause of time. Okay, you come and the sister next to you. And then anyone else with, with let's say about 10 or 20, I don't care, we'll just go tonight. And uh, I just feel the anointing in a wonderful way. 
the Lord is taking us into his heart this week. I feel something a little different in Lake Hamilton Seminar this week. There seems to be a, a great embrace and a yearning of the Father to bring us into the Holy of, of all. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the, the youth director told me that he was going to take our kids uh, out and have a little time with them. And I want a hand for our youth because I, I think you've, you've been real good. Amen. And uh, if it's all right with everybody and our director, uh, while I start ministering, you guys slip out, okay? And have a lot of fun. Wait, 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 wait your director. Okay, go ahead. Slip out. There they go, slipping out. We're proud of our kids. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God, sister. Handalama, shandalama, handa. Lord, we praise you. Let's bring our minds into subjection to the Holy Ghost. Search the deep things of God, Father. Because I have cocooned you in my grace and the anointing of the scepter of Esther and that purity, yea, of the zeal of the house of the Lord, for you've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. Therefore, the timing of that scepter is upon you. And I will open that door because the key of David is upon thee, and that bruise of your heart is lifted, for the abuse of words shall be turned into my glory. Yea, you will neither feel rejected, no more. I've lifted the rejection off of you. I've given you a seal in your forehead from the debris of life that would try to burden and try to cause this depression, but I've lifted it from you. The back of your head, the ceiling of the emotion, and I have cut you loose of that heritage emotion that would have tried to discourage or weigh you down. The anointing of the Lord is upon your shoulders with great wisdom, and my joy shall go before you. And within two weeks, that decision that seemingly is trying to crop up again in the harassment in a legal form to eat and erode, erode your inheritance and that which I have purposed for thee, I will rebuke the devourer. I have loosed my joy upon you. I will lift up your hands. I will heal and strengthen you. And the vision that I gave you over, it was six years ago, under a great turmoil, that I loosed you into the ministry of my anointing. And you will be strong in the word. And you will know that as you pray for others, I have loosed the creative talents upon thee. And you will go forth in my name for a new door, an effectual door is being opened, and no man will shut it, for the authority of my word shall go before you, and that weakness through your back and in with the metabolism of your body is healed. Hallelujah. And the Lord has lifted that from you, and that emotional which caused a nervous reaction is loose. In the name of Jesus, I say go, and the authority of the Lord shall go before you and my peace shall be with thee. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. What's your first name? Because, yea, the sword of my mouth is upon thee, and the coals of the altar did cleanse thy tongue, and the anointing of my peace shall go before thee. Rise up, my love, my fair one, for the beauty of the Lord's with you, and you will find that you'll be at the right place or right time. And those things that would try to have detracted you, I have loosed my joy upon you, and I've given you the apple of my eye. You're the apple, you're the authority and the anointing that I will use to go before me, and my peace shall be upon you, and you'll be strong to usher others into the beauty of my truth, and my anointing shall bless you, and that loved one that's uh, far away, that which seemingly there's no communication. I'm going to send the word and them out of jeopardy, and the anointing will break the yoke, and we'll rejoice together. Amen. There's uh, uh, some, someone close that 
is trying your pain and burden for their disobedience. But we put that back on them tonight. You're set free, and the anointing will bless you mightily, and you'll not have to pay for their disobedience. I am the Lord. I am the burden bearer. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For oh, my son, the weapons of your warfare are mighty, for I have loosed my joy upon you, and as I sealed Ezekiel's forehead, I have sealed your forehead in great joy. And the authority of the Lord shall go before you, and my peace is over thee, and thou shalt see the mantle of Elijah, and you will pour in the salt in the cistern that is poison, and I have set you free from this hour. Go in my peace, and know that the gifts are loose within you. You've been flowing in them, but I'm bringing you into a, well, a deeper level in the word of the Lord and the, the knowledge of my discernment, and you'll know things before they happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, there's, a, there's a real desire. You have a local anointing. You've always had this, but you've had an international anointing. And there's going to be a problem that you will go for and uh, be with a team effort to set many friends. Amen. Of other countries. Amen. Thank you. All right. A couple in your name. Amen. Silent pet man. Just join in. Because I've you, your joint heirs together of the graces of life, and the seal of my anointing is upon you. My daughter, the thrill of my name and the word has gone down through your body, and I have loosed thee, and the joy of my strength shall come upon you, and the revelation of my word shall take yea authority from the top of your head in that which tries to come against you with, with uh, I can't even describe it, just of the spirit, it's just terrible pain that tries to come to you system, I cut it from you in the name of Jesus. Leave! Come out in the name of the Lord. And that, hallelujah, that physical grace and healing goes all the way down through your backbone and there you're healed. Now, that infection is a chronic thing but from the small of your back through you, the intimate area. I lift that from you, saith the Lord, and you're going to strengthen others and you're going to minister to those that have turmoil and you're lifting it off of them. Now, come on out from the wings, come out from the curtains, and you shall complement each other, and you will set many free. Have any depression in those things that you're going to set many families free. And you'll run across those that are at the point of separation that you will speak the word of the Lord, because as you've been comforted, yea, I will comfort those in any kind of trouble. Amen. And my seal is upon you, and the grace of my anointing shall bring you to pass. And through your chest and your circulation, I've healed, and I have cut you loose by the blood covenant, and my authority is upon you. So therefore, be gracious and know that I've anointed you. That which tried to, you know, uh, entangle ferns and, and legal doctrines, you're going to speak to your land. Oh, earth, 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 hear you the word of the Lord. And as you set the land free, the Lord thy God, that which was robbed, is going to be restored. And more, because the of my heart is given unto thee, and as you speak, receive it. Amen. God bless you. Okay, this will be a nap in the line. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I've loosed my joy over thee, and my peace shall go before you. For the strength of the Lord has touched and healed, and I will give you and that desire of your heart, and my joy shall bring it to pass, and you will be strong in me. Knowing that I've touched your hand, and yea, and the authority of my zeal is upon you. And that which you represent it. Now, this intercessory anointing that I spoke to you about even tonight, your heart lifted into my heart. And I'm going to touch you and use you mightily, and the grace of the Almighty God shall go before you, and we'll rejoice together. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you announce the same thing, if you want to break something, we will. Let's hurry. Amen. Well, I love the anointing having this upon us now. Praise God. I've cocooned you, my daughter. I've cocooned you in my love and the joy of my strength. And therefore, you've been faithful to the few. I'm going to make you rulers over many, and my peace shall go before you. That which tried by abuse of words to discourage you recently. I'm looking at from you. It's a new day in your heart and home, 
and my joy shall bring it to pass. Do not fear the anointing, break and my peace is upon thee, and my understanding shall touch thee. There's been this sort of a mental, but an emotional uh, block. I wouldn't have said it, but uh, that's right. And uh, so we're lifting that from you. Uh, you're concerned about that, has uh, mental reasonings, your memory, and so forth. I've lifted up from you, say the Lord. And with the stripes of the Lord, you're healed. Amen. Reach your hands out toward us. The desire of her heart is released and healed. Command in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet, every mental faculty to be brought together in healing power. Hallelujah. There it is. Oh, I felt that beautifully. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Glory to God. When they lifted up Moses' hand, what's your first name? Maria. 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 When they lifted up Moses' hands, I lifted up your hands. And those loved ones, and there's one seemingly incarcerated, and there's one in jeopardy. And I'm going to set them free. Your loved one that you prayed for, the anointing of the Lord, you have called him out, and my joy shall go before you. There's also a family uh, uh, involved. I will bless you mightily. The anointing of my peace is upon you, and I will speak. I'm going to write a chapter in your life, because, yea, I love together. I have walked with thee, and we have agreed, and you have stood on my word. And even though the enemy has made you feel humiliated, that you think you don't have enough faith, but I gave you a measure of faith. It's my joy. It's the faith of Almighty God. Now I'm sending the word and lifting that jeopardy and that which tried to imprison these loved ones. I release them, and your prayers have availed much. We rejoice together, say thy God. Now this is physical depression. In Jesus' name, the weakness to lift off of this body. The metabolism is healed. The anointing of the Lord going through down to your body and through your limbs. And praise God. The night season, you have been disturbed. The terror by me. I'm lifting that from you, and you'll not fear any longer. And your environment where your dwelling is, I'm lifting off the of that area and setting them free, because you have been saved the Lord. Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. What did you mean? And because your example of my strength shall go into you, and my joy is around about you, do not fear, yea, the mantle of the Lord is around about your shoulders. And I will give you wisdom in this matter. I'm going to also promote you and that which your financial uh, limitation that tried to come against even tonight. It made a weariness to your spirit. I will not have that, saith the Lord Jesus. I've spoken to your spirit. I've spoken to the beauty of the Lord within thee. And you shall enjoy life. And that joy, you say, oh, if I was my old self, oh, if I was my old self, you're going to be your new self. You'll be great rejoicing. And yea, the joy and the thrill and the personality, the effervescence of my spirit shall go before you. And the bubbly overjoying <laughs> thoughts of the Lord shall be restored because I'm going to bring to pass it as your heart. And I'm going to heal the innermost being of your spirit. And in the inner intimately, and I will bless you mightily, and you'll say, yea, there's an intimate relationship in that area that uh, the Lord says he will heal to go before thee, say the Lord. So, yea, rejoice. I'm walking and with me and the joy of the Lord. I brought you through that fiery trial. Now I'm going to ask you to minister to others, say the Lord. Your dwelling is going to be enhanced. There will be a release financially. And my strength shall go before you. Uh, there's a loved one, of course, that's discouraged right now. But I'm going to bring them out, and you'll see that I've healed this situation, and there will not be the schism. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Kashi kanamohota. Eha. Eha se ti diato mokeda. For the hell shall go forth. And the hell is within thee. For the anointing is the proclamation of my joy is over thee. So therefore the seal of the trumpet anointing has been given unto thee, and the thoughts of my heart 
and you will rejoice because I have sealed my anointing and I will heal and strengthen you so that my peace is upon you. And because they are those that do you, ye good, I will bless them and anoint them, saith the Lord. Amen. That's an unusual prophecy. I don't use it. But uh, God has counted you worthy, and everybody around you will be infected, but affected by joy. Amen. God bless you. Heaven. For my strength to seal you, and the anointing of my concepts and the precepts of my joy. For yea, here a little and there a little, I will anoint thee with great joy and the authority of ministry that I've sealed within thee. You will hear my voice, for your ears shall be open. I then I have released Isaiah 50 verse 4 for thee. For yea, I will give you the tongue of the learned. You say, but Lord, my background is limited. I failed you here and I failed you there. And I am not limited to your goose, and I will give you the tongue of the land, and I will open your ear, and my joy shall go before you, so you will release the gifts and the anointings, and prophetic joy shall spring up within you, stir up the gifts, edify my people, because you have a sensitivity and a compassion, and I'm going to use it to release the creative word to set my people free. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Glenn. And because the joy of the Lord is your strength, I've sealed you in my power and my authority. And because you have desired, yea, my anointing, you will see it come to pass. Do not fear, I know your heart, and I will write a new chapter of authority within thee, and that which, yea, was a, a great and a bruise to thy spirit. I've lifted you out of that, and now I've brought you to the healing mountains of my anointing, and yea, the fountains of your salvation shall spring up within you, and I have ye condemned that which would have tried to discourage and weaken you physically, but I release the miracle of the most high God. So in my name, in the name of Jesus, the inspiration of my word shall go forth from you, and we'll rejoice together. Because the strength of my words upon you, I will bless thee and stand with you. And those things of the last four days that would have tried to come against you and limit and limit and limit and yea, would make your heart heavy. I've lifted that from you. And the power of my word shall go before you. And the anointing of the Lord shall heal this emotional strain. And those words, those abusive words, are lifted from you. And yea, no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. The anointing of my peace is over you. And that which tries to drag this loved one I will loose my joy upon you. You've already prayed through. Now rejoice, because the battle's not yours, it's mine. And we'll rejoice together, because you know the Lord has intervened. And I brought you under this teaching, so to make you strong. And I brought you under this teaching, so to make you strong. And others are watching, and they're seeing that they, the grace of our God has been given unto me. And I will set many free because of your testimony in me. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength, and I will bless thee in my supreme of joy. I put my hands around you. I will infer thee with the power of my word. And I am the good shepherd, and therefore the sheep know my voice. And I've anointed your ears to hear, and my voice and my direction shall be given unto thee. And for those things of yours that you've had to pick up the scrap, and you've had to pay for the disobedience of others. And I will bless thee and honor thee in the house of thy God. And my inspiration shall be upon you. And we'll rejoice together. What more can I say, saith the Lord? Because I will walk with thee and speak to you face to face. We can enjoy each other. And know your peace is in me. And your face to face. You shall behold my glory, saith the Lord. Praise God. Because the strength of the spirit of my mouth is upon you. And as Isaiah saw me high and lifted up, you will see the Lord in a new fashion. So after this week, those things that try to be encumbered you and try to drag you, I have kept you loose on every side. And the anointing of my power has loosed your ears and yea, delivered thy spirit. For there is many processes, yea, that I'm setting you free, but you trust in me for the anointing of the Lord has rejuvenated. And I have 
took the power of the Lord down through thy spirit. And I have uncovered those things, and now I'm replacing it with my word, and with my spirit, and with my power. See, in times past, you had enough prayer, you had the people prayed, the eleven prayed, and yet you just got enough religion to be dangerous. And there's a lot of things that I'm trying under. I'm going on to the prayer of your spirit and pray. And I'm making a first pass. And the second pass, I will make straight. And now you're rethinking my presence and my word. And I'm going to use you to help others. Do not feel the humiliation of limited, but you'll know that what you've done to, you're able to pull others up into the high calling of our God. And you'll see it with us. Amen. God bless you. You better get that and put it in your Bible and we'll get warfare with it. Because I will walk with you and I will proclaim you with the key of David. The key of David means that you have come to a door. And that door you just bumped your nose against quite a few times. How much is involved also, but I'm going to open that door and the man will stop. The anointing of my peace, the brother says, and the soil of my word is sealed to your heart. So I will open up by my spirit. And the Holy Ghost is writing new chapter within your heart, my son. And the vision and the glory of your youth, because I brought you forth, and because you're your, your parents and those that dedicated you unto me, the anointing of a particular loved one saved for the destiny of my glory for you. And your spirit is childlike. And compassion really is coming upon thee that will bless you and strengthen you. And you've given to others, you've given him the results are not pleasant. Mm-hmm. It's what you've done it out of the compassion that I've given you. Now I'm going to bless you, my Lord. Now my heart shall bless you in the glory of my word. You haven't given into a bag full of holes. You haven't given to the spirit of the prayer, but they you've given to me. And my joy shall be upon you. So from this day on, wrap your tongue, fast your words, speak the things that are positive, because I'm going to pour you out a blessing. And these other loved ones and those that, that, are, that are heavy on your heart now, you will set them free. And within two weeks, you'll know and you'll hear a good report. I am thy God, and my peace is upon you, my daughter, for the joy of the Lord shall surround you. And I will lift you up into my heart, and those efforts and those great well, uh, responsibilities or tasks you are not able to cope with. I'm going to bless you with strength and heal you with power, that the strength of the Lord is healed through your body from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You're able to take it. You're able to come into a fresh and of God. And I will bless you mightily, and you'll be a strong power. And others will wonder what has happened because the joy of the Lord is your sin. So smile a while. Amen. And let the Lord go before you. So I will open the door in the name of God. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. That's all right. Look at that smile. I was going to say, give you faith to that. But I think that was more me than the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because, Jerry, I will equip you well. And I bless you as you were in a captivity position. Jerry, as if you took the heart off the water, you have taken your heart off the water. You have sung the Lord's song in a strange situation. And you're an abusive child. You serve me. And an abusive child. And the Lord pierced and cut a of your heart. But yet you trusted. You trusted me. You loved me. And therefore the Lord will lift you out. I will lift the smell of smoke off of you. I will lift that which would have tried to burn my spirit. It's gone. That abuse. It's gone. It's lifted. But for a time, an unforgiveness. But yet you have saw my heart. And you've said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. So therefore I will bless you mightily. I'm going to come upon you with strength and joy. And because you've given liberally, 
you'll receive liberally. And I will bless you and strengthen you. And you'll have seed for the sower. There is a conflict in an economic or in a twisting. You're in the, a tug of war situation. I'm going to lift that off of you and your dwelling. And I'm going to bless you financially. And you'll see the Lord promote you and give you favor. And you will know the Lord has answered your prayer. I think it was three days ago that you really had this concern. Now, I'm going to flow before you and make the crooked way straight, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's a, more the Lord than me when I said I think. I know. Hallelujah. And because my joy and the banners of my power have gone before you, no doubt not, my daughter, that the authority of ministry is upon you. And because I delegated that ministry in your teenage years, the anointing of the Lord, yea, did loose many miracles within you. I've already purposed it. There's miracles. There's even created miracles where amputees will go out. You're going to see it and be glad. And because I have spoken that anointing within you, stir up that gift. Stir up my word that I put the visions within you. As my servant Paul had to stir up uh, Timothy and remind Timothy of those prophecies. Do not just relax with prophecies, but yea, stir them up within thy spirit. For the prophetic ministry and the anointing of healing power shall go before you. So yea, you're not limited in me. For I've surrounded you with my grace. I will engulf thee with confidence and power. You will feel the chill. You felt my presence so strong before. And you'll feel it's like a chill, but it's a, a shivering of anointing going down through your body. And you will speak and deliver many. And even great achievements of healing shall go before you. You will be one of the first to speak it out. Because now the Lord's not just using this known person in that one. He's using his body now, and we will flow together, saith the Lord, and I will direct you and that personal one that's upon you. I've sent the word and healed them, and that one that you're aching for, I will, I will give you good news, and they're going to contact you, and that which hurts you will be lifted in a moment, saith the Lord. Just intimate things, amen. Hallelujah. In prophecy, in prophecy, know that the Lord wants you to have wisdom. You know, the person knows exactly. And may God give us wisdom in, in the authority of the Word. And because uh, you might feel something, you, you know, you know in part, but when you label it, then it might, just one little iota, one little, you know, and, uh, and people are very, uh, when it comes, <laughs> it's a spiritual thing, they want it to be just perfect, you know, I mean, just perfect. Uh, but this treasure is an earthen vessel. Amen? So remember that. And uh, that's why, praise God, we love each other. Now you can begin. My boy here. All right. What's his name? David. For David, my flow and my power shall flow through you. And the gifts of my love is centered within thee. You're sealed with Ezekiel's anointing. The power and the call of Almighty God has made you sensitive and very compassionate. And therefore, yea, in your birthing and in your healing, I will strengthen you and bring it forth, and my joy shall be upon you, so that you will know the apostolic authority, and you will delegate my wisdom, and many shall be loosed in the ministry. And Drew... The anointing of the Lord is with you. I told you I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will bless you during the night season, and your educational processes shall be healed, and my anointing is around about you. And you'll know that I'll bless you in your schooling, for your mind shall be straight on me. And from now on, my anointing is over you, and I have loosed thee, and I will use you mightily, and you'll stir up the gift and move in the power of my understanding, saith the Lord. Amen. Okay, let's see some A's coming up here. <laughs> Amen. Your schoolwork's going to be blessed, son. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because the zeal of the house of the Lord is upon you, 
And because the joy of the Lord is your strength, you have understood and been compassion, great compassion about for four years now in those that when you heard it on the news, when you saw pictures, and when everybody presented a just cause, but yet you kept my heart, yet you kept my feelings, and yet you knew and you suffered with them. How humiliating is those that have been crushed by the media and those that have been tripped up by the enemy and those ministries that seemingly are run out as an old rag is run out. But yet, you said, my God, help them. My God, I, I realize that your heart was reaching out, and therefore I've kept you in my power and in my purposes, and I will bless you and teach you my ways, and you shall help others and be strong in the power, and you will teach my word with great joy, and you're even going to know the creative talent, and you'll sing the Lord's song, and you'll come forth in my joy, for the enriching of my teaching shall go through your being, and I have enriched thee and through thy back, yea, I have loosed and liberated and healed, and this that would try to worry thee, yea, through your digestive system, through the lower part of your abdomen, I am healing and strengthening you, and we'll rejoice together because I called you, I have elected you, my peace shall go before you, and I've given you as a vision, I've given you authority to compliment thy husband. You're the gift that I had for each other, and he's a gift for you, and what you are, Yea, he is not, and what you are not, he is. And you shall flow together, and my peace shall go before you. Now the joy of the Lord within two weeks is opening up a new door that you'll feel grateful for. For six months now, I've heard your cry, and we'll rejoice together. Amen. Because my son, that's all right, stay with me. Join him. Because my son, you join us together, the graces of life, I will not allow this grace of life to be robbed from you. I'm going to open up this door, this high calling door, the anointing of secular grace shall be given unto thee, and I will bless you mightily, for I have broken the yoke financially. That which would try to crush is lifted from you. I'm going to restore that which was robbed from you, and by the cunning of others and the wrath of men, I'm going to change. I'm going to turn the wrath of men to praise me, and I'm going to anoint you with grace. And the power of my word shall go before you, and we will enjoy it together. Because you'll know, you'll see a fresh anointing, a fresh opportunity, and you shall enjoy it. And take authority over your land, for the land, hallelujah, will come forth, and the legal harassments are lifted, and my peace shall go before you. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan. Hallelujah. For my joy is around about you, and my peace is over thee. For I have strength in thine ears. So, yea, loose my joy, and I will use you, and I will speak my anointing for the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the commands and the statutes of Almighty God will go before you. You will be successful. For in Psalms 1, yea, verse 3, you shall, and 4, you shall put your hand to it and be prosperous, and I will bless you mightily. And for the ways of the Lord, you will strengthen my people, and yea, my heart shall go before thee. We'll rejoice together. You just stand here. What's your name? Help me pray. For, for who? Cameron. Cameron? Good. As the joy of the Lord is round about you, and I will bless you mightily, and the yea, the strength of my word is over thee. So the mantle of Elisha is upon thee, and you'll throw in the salt, and the peace of the Lord shall go before you, and the joy of the Lord is known within thee as the salt of the earth. Therefore you will be strong. You're going to sing the Lord's song. You're going to embrace many with creative talent, and my spirit shall flow through you, for you're the trumpet of the Lord. Let it go. Let it blast. Let it sound. For yea, now is the time of the great Feast of Tabernacles, and you shall be a great trumpet to call my people together.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can say it. Hallelujah. Patrick. And for the strength that I've given thee and for the power of my visitation, I've forgiven. You know I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, I'm the God of your yesterdays. I walked in those yesterdays. I repaired as the saints prayed. I forgave as they prayed. Now you forget it. Move on into my joy. Know the grace of Almighty God. I've loosed you with power and might. And the success of the Lord has been reestablished upon you. You will be successful. I've given you wisdom. I will give you creative and inventive wisdom. You're going to go forth and have favor. The door will open. I'm going to bless you. Not only is a pulpit for the congregation, but you have a pulpit in secular anointing. And that pulpit's going to bless you among the nations. You will be released to bless my people. So I'm going to strengthen you and that hurt of your heart. Have innermost desire. I'm going to heal. And we'll rejoice together. Say the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glad it. And because I've released my joy upon you, and because the understanding of my spirit will go before you, I have blessed you. Yea, I've touched your feet. I'm going to step on your feet. And because the anointing of the Lord has gone before you, my word is a lamp to your feet, a light to your pathway. All you have to do is step out. Now, I'm going to give you much understanding. You have taken in some, for some great uh, grief or circumstances of negative origin. I will reduce the devour. I'm pulling them as roots out of your being. My joy is over thee. You're set free, and your joy shall return with the great anointing that I've loosed you with peace. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now your eyes are healed, and I will give you, yea, the apple of my eye. And I will bless you mightily that your attitudes will be changed into my attitude. And you'll let the be attitudes be your attitude. But because my joy has given you life, and you will live. Now that one man, your loved one, I'm going to send the word, not just one, there's about three. I'm sending the word. I'm healing. And you'll know your prayers have availed much. But there's one right now that's in jeopardy. Amen. Amen. Let's praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. All right, amen. amen. So that'll be it tonight. I'll, I guess uh, maybe we'll wait till uh, they have, uh, we'll dismiss and go beg government for some seed candy. And uh, <laughs> this has been a good time together. Come by the Glen. We love you. Well, I think we can just stand and go find a bed and get some sleep. Come back in the morning for prayer meeting and breakfast at 8 o'clock, and we'll carry on from there. Dismissed, company. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.